clap. Three, two, one. There we go. I do that because I've got to resync all of this stuff later. So for those of you here, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, just depending upon where you are. We are just about to start recording um, this week's episode of This Week in Barbecue. It's a lot of this in this sentence. Uh, but if you guys do not want to see my mug, I don't blame you, uh, you can head over to um, our YouTube and watch Brian. He looks better. He's got a better beard. That's the only thing. That's it. <laughs> and a nicer hat. It is, it is a pretty sick it hat. It is a pretty sick hat. Uh, all right. Shout out to Amir, Redbird Barbecue. I did. Uh, I didn't. I'm not gonna lie. When I when you came over the first time, I was like, I kind of want to steal that hat. Like, what this one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, it's a nice. Uh, hat. You know what? Like, I'll I'll, I'll shoot Amir a message. He'll probably send you one. Okay, right on. Yeah. Right on. I got a, a. He just got a syntax smoker. Really? Yeah. Look, it's a pretty sick looking rig. Leave whenever you can, brother. Shoot me the our live link so that these people can stop looking at me and start looking at Brian, and I can uh, feel a little bit better about myself. Is it time for the bad, bad idea? Not yet. Let's, uh, we, not yet. Uh, okay. Not yet. But uh, guys, so for those of you who are in here, I do want uh, I do want your, your your opinion on something. What is uh, a animated or cartoon uh, song theme song or opening? That hits much harder than it has any right to. Dude, the Mulan song. The Mulan song? Oh, the I, the, yeah. the the like montage where she's she's building up. She's yeah, finally th- climbing that the one. That is a good one. Yeah. That is a good one. Like, make a man out of yeah, you. yeah, make a man out of you. Yeah, which is extremely contradictory depending upon what you know when you realize what that whole scene is about. <laughs> um, my personal ones, I have two. First one is. Uh, Eye to Eye, the Powerline song from uh, a Goofy movie, my hands down favorite animated movie. My second one is Take Me There from the Rugrats movie featuring Maya, uh, Mace, I think I had Black Street in there. I had everyone in there. I'm like, you had, you had no right dropping bars like that heavy for a child's animated movie. D- 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 uh, someone said Bloody Power Fame. From Bastard Heavy Metal. Okay, that sounds like anime. That sounds like anime. That's got to be anime somewhere. Uh, and then someone said Voltron. Rayshawn Bolt. Yeah, v- Voltron had some bangers. Voltron, that opening. Do, oof. do puppet movies count? It's an, it's If it's non-real, I'm, I'll take it. We'll let it play. The, the and Team America goes, theme. Uh, where did that go? How did that America. Go? Oh. Gonna say. Well, the, actually, yeah. This is me. That's, that is anime. Puppets. I'm going to add in Muppet Treasure Island. Muppet Treasure Island. Muppet, yeah, Treasure, yeah, yeah, Muppet Treasure Island had a banger. Someone said, yes, um, the Rugrat song with Maya. Love that one. Yes, Take Me Take me There was a banger. I'm not even going to lie to you. It's in the playlist because it's just one of those brings you back. Dun, 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 dun. And then they just came and I was like, oh, my gosh. Why would you all show, show no care? They just said, hey, let's just make this as, as good as possible. Um, but, yeah, Take Me There and Powerline. Eye to eye, those are my go tos. That's what's happening. Did anyone else have their own suggestions? Let's, uh, Barbers, uh, sorry, yes, yes, they are. My Barbers is, uh, definitely <laughs> great in order for, for fixing what I've got going here. So, guys, if you're here and you're wanting to see the, the full setup of what we have going, I'm about to post in my stories right now, and you can hit the link. And watch the whole setup, watch myself, and please go watch Brian so you guys can stop stop yeah. looking at me. And uh, you guys can see everything live because we're streaming it. So I'm actually posting that right now. Just tap the link in the stories. It's uh, going to be, let's do a selfie with you guys. Here, let's, let's uh, see how we make this work. Do the old uh, just one, two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got it. So you guys can see everything, and hopefully you can see yourself in the shot. Nope, because my head is huge and blocked you all. But go check out my stores, tap the link, come join us in the land of YouTube, and it'll be fun. I'll still have this running, but I'd like to see you guys on YouTube. We have a little bit more wiggle room over there. They don't they don't yell at me as much uh, as as the Instagrammies do. 
Uh, let's see here. Rugrats theme song was done by Mark Mothers from Dave Fame from Devo Fame. Mothersboro. Oh, brisket, fat side, up or down? Rayshawn, we will get to that question because as it is a uh, live Q and A question. Fat side, side. Fat side, side. Just toss that bad boy on the side. New technique, man. New te- <laughs> We're changing the game. Oh gosh, I feel like that would. I feel like that just ends so badly, though. Just to a fat side, side, which is weird because if you do a suspended, it's not crazy. Uh, what are you gonna do? Yeah, like the Brazilian or Argentinian style. Yeah. Speaking of, shout out to Al Fergoni, my man Al, hundred gram. He's a such a solid cat, man. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to get up again. I, w- I want to do like the beef ribs that Argentinian style where they're hanging. Yeah, I've, yeah like, we've, we've, like we've done some Fifty Shades of Smoke uh, cooks like that. Yeah, where, where it's almost like a, and then you serve it basically medium well, like it's not yeah, fully broken yeah. down. Well, so for that, I do. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, I have a recipe in Kevin Bloodsoe's uh, cookbook. I can't remember what page I used to know, but it ends in a nine, I think. Um, those, that smoked pho dish that I did, though, that's how I did those beef ribs. I didn't do them full to tender. I did them to where I can still get a little bite and uh, just cut cross grain, put them in. It was it's a really good dish. I, I hope people gave it a shot. Uh, I'm tagging you so you have to repost it, you know. Stop trying to not tell people you know me. It's starting to hurt my feelings. I saw you were interviewing uh, Eli for the uh, co-host position. <laughs> um, you weren't supposed to see that. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't supposed to see that. Um, you know, maybe I, maybe I can go join the Manning cast. Yeah, well, hey, hey, you know, well, they're going to have you on camera and you got to remember the name of the show. So I don't know if you're actually going to be able to do that part of the job. Well, I know the name of the show. It's the Manning cast. Oh, you remember the name of the show? You can't remember it. Ours? All right. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, that week in in cooking. Yes. This 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 day with food. <laughs> well, for those of you who can see tomorrow with YouTube's. edibles. <laughs> Next week's vegan dish. <laughs> Fired. Fired, basically. We're going ba- to, uh, I'm going to start a show called, uh, we're going to do it today, but it airs tomorrow. It's going to be called Tomorrow's Leftovers. Tomorrow's Leftovers. <laughs> Tomorrow's Leftovers. Cheers, uh, bud. Uh, cheers. Now, th- there was a pizza place down that I used to go where I grew up, and they had a sign that said, uh, free pizza tomorrow. <laughs> so, you I always did. had something to look forward to. Always. Um... No spiel yet, because you, sir, and once again, guys, I just posted the link. Uh, go to the stories, tap watch live stream, and you can see all of this controlled chaos. And you can finally check out and see how full and luxurious Brian's beard actually is. It, it needs is. to get trimmed. Like I got I to gotta make a... Don't gotta, you, I've got beard envy. I do, because uh, mine's all knocked back. I'm aerodynamic right now, though. I got yeah, to- yeah. Mine's mine's just too much. <laughs> um, Let's hit it with the good idea, bad idea. This is just a bad, bad idea. Well, I'm even better. Oh, and this is real, okay? So it, I saw it's this. It's not article. having my sisters here, because that is a very bad idea. It might be worse. Oh, I, you haven't met them. If uh, you okay, have. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. This isn't an issue for you and not me, but... All right, right on. Some tech bros. Uh, oh, gosh. So this is an article on Business Insider... Uh, from a GQ article about a surgeon in Las Vegas that is performing height surgery on some like uh, some tech people who work like Google and Microsoft and stuff. And like the process is he breaks their femur or hip bone and inserts a screw and then like and then using magnets, they adjust it ever so slightly over 30 days and you can gain three to six inches that way. You know, I got, I got guys that give a left arm for three to six inches, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, look, I, like, I don't know, man. Like, as soon as, like, oh, height surgery. Oh, we're going to break your femurs. That sounds terrible. Oh, so. oh yeah, and it starts at $75,000. Holy cow. No. seventy five to $150,000. I'd much rather stay short um, than have to deal with that. And I just got to say, once again, shout out to my stylist and barber, man. Goodness gracious. But uh, You're not even going to name drop them? You're just going to... Sh- no, I'm I'm selfish, and it's already hard to get bookings with them now. I had to book this like four weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that's that's my problem. Is it takes me a month to get into yeah, my so like I don't my need spot. you guys getting busier. I, I'd make sure I tip handsomely to 
make up for the difference of the shout out, but um, let me get into my spiel. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to This Week in Barbecue. I'm your host, Rashid Phillips. Joining me as always is... Brian Hull. If we can ever get him to sound like he's excited to be here. This is This Week in Barbecue, and This Week in Barbecue is a barbecue-focused podcast that introduces you to the good, the bad, and everything in the world of barbecue. I was excited. Yeah, it's bullshit. I'm, I'm wearing my going fishing shirt. <laughs> like... <laughs> Everyone yes, can see. Everyone can see. Please go. I'm, go. Wearing, I'm wearing a, a sick red bird barbecue hat and my going fishing shirt because I guess I'm I'm going now fishing? officially a full time craft barbecue guy. Hey, hey, there it is. We're gonna we're gonna plug in audio cues and that, there'll be a clap. Imagine there was a round of applause. Right yeah. There. So Use yeah. So my my CV now reads 2012 2022 audio engineer, <laughs> comma 2023 dad. <laughs> <laughs> Because it will only last a year of being a full-time barbecue guy. Mine, mine just said, uh, my, my business card just says amateur fire starter. That's, that's a good one. It is. Yeah, that's, that's pretty solid. clever. They were asking me at the, at the event. And I guess I'll kick it off, guys. Uh, so this week I uh, attended the grand opening of the Barbecue Guys Design Room uh, Showcase Floor, where they were housing... All units except the right ones. There were no offsets there. Uh, uh, look, that's that's not the crowd they're going for, though. It's true. It's true. That area and that area, they're not going to be pushing smoke and all that jazz. So I'm not I'm not that concerned. Um, but they had a lot of cool stuff there. A lot of great setups, like stuff from Weber, stuff from Napoleon, all types of brands. Blaze, which makes some crazy good uh, Kamado style cooker. Um, but it was a fun time. I got to catch up, which everyone's uh, saw. Or cared about they're like how do you know eli manning how did this and this like i'm aware of people you guys to know everything let me live let me be great but he and i got to catch up what was good because we hadn't really seen each other since like november of last year uh he's, a, he's actually really really good at smoking yeah he eli eli the does Patriots. roll some smoke <laughs> <laughs> the setup I like the setup. I appreciate a good setup. Yeah, all right. Sorry. No, no, no. no. I, I, I had that one in the chamber. No, there it is. Got to fire him off. You only miss 100% of the shots you don't take, bro. Oh, Michael uh, Scott. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> Some guy on ice. <laughs> no, it was a, it was a good time. Um, and, you know, just to catch up and then got, getting to meet people. So I'm still taking it back when people are aware of who I am and want to chat. And uh, I'm not talking about you. Like, he knows who I am. We're, We've talked about just they had various uh, food bloggers from Atlanta here. They had people from HGTV, USA Today, Discovery Channel, Cooking Channel. Like it was a whole hodgepodge assortment of, hey, what do you do? What do you know? Like this is where media training is for and what have you. But it, it was fun. It's definitely something I suggest people at a place that people go check out if you're looking for sort of like a more higher end uh, cooking experience. I like That's a backyard is. kitchen is like the way I'd phrase it. Definitely, I, I'm definitely. kind of I'm kind of surprised they didn't have more like a, like the gaucho style grills because I feel I feel like in what they're going for that fits really well in kind of that aesthetic. I think it would it would definitely work out there. There's some great brands out there like uh, Nuke Delta and. Um, uh, Al's got his, you know, open fire grill sub that's extremely versatile as well. Um, but that crowd, they know what they're doing, so that's what they push for. And you don't get to leave with anything, but you can experience everything in the order and they deliver. They offer so many customer experience and options for you that it's definitely worth checking into. Not a paid plug. It was just a good experience. You know, got to meet some uh, fellow smoke rollers. Um, shout out to Christy. Uh, shout out to Brad, shout out to uh, uh, Falcon, shout out to everybody. Really, it was just, it was just a really good time. It was, it was fun around. We did some chicken, some cookies, some mac and cheese, sausages, nothing as great as yours, of course. Um, what else was there? It was, it was a nice spread. They had it catered. And I, I think it's I was, ballsy. I was, I was about to ask. It's like, I didn't they see much the, grilled meat on that. No, <laughs> they had it catered, and it's ballsy to make barbecue for a barbecue crowd, and I would not have made that grow up, but, you know, it was what it was, and I'll leave it at that. I will not name the company that was there, because I'm not going to knock anybody from getting theirs, but that was... Uh, I will ask after the show. I am still chewing that brisket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, hit me with the bud. What do we have as far as news this week? All right, so, Troubadour Festival, they're doing two this year, so they just had their last one. Uh, it... Depending on when this airs, it might be two weekends ago. Okay. But there's still tickets available for their October 15th uh, date in Salina, Texas. 
Okay. So you can get you can get VIP tickets, you can get music and barbecue tickets, or you can just get music tickets. So there's a wide variety of options. And Troubadour was like it used to be Red Dirt uh, Festival. Okay. Before he before he expanded into the uh, the Troubadour brand. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not bad. And what yeah. we have is a it is it is really like festivals are still actually happening a lot. I think every week we speak on one coming or next year's or one that's just being popped up and we're being alerted of like there's still it's still heavily festival season and there's still good ones to go to shameless plug october 19th yours truly and gang will be at the holy smokes not october november 19th oh, october, i was gonna say october 19th this is new to me october 19th is my birthday uh i'm an xl in shirt i'm a 36 34 pant i'm a 15 in shoe and I drink bourbon, if anybody should uh, feel so inclined. We drink bourbon. We drink bourbon. Um, oh, well, this was actually not a... Your username stuck out, so I think I'll ask you that question. What was your favorite dish you cooked on the American Barbecue Showdown? And this is being asked by At Your Funeral, which is just very Wednesday Adams of you, so I, I, right on. That's a saves the day song. <laughs> <laughs> now we know. Uh, what was my or, what was my favorite it, dish? Was it a band of horses song? I don't know. It, it's Six one of them. Bo- both of them have songs about funerals. Makes sense. Uh, what was my what was my favorite dish that? I can, made? I, can I tell you? You can tell me. I don't know. All right. I loved when you were cooking. What was okay? What was your uh, your road kill? Beaver. Okay, you were cooking beaver, mm-hmm. beaver and then they showed you cooking beef ribs on a green green egg. That's that's my favorite moment that's of the a, entire that's show. A, that, that was that was a wonderful edit. That's a wonderful edit. Oh, at your funeral said it's a saves the day song. Oh, got it right off the bat. There you go. Um, so, yeah, that was a horrible edit on their part. Um, my favorite dish. I can't, I can't I the mess up part is I can't actually say what my what my favorite dish is because then there's a whole it would contradict some stuff that's in the show. Can, can I so guess I your favorite cooking experience? Right on, go for it. The lamb. Oh, hands down. Yeah, yeah. hands down. The cross. Yeah, the anytime you cook a side over of cross, a, you yeah. know I'd get down. I, you know I feel comfortable with a flame. Yes, yeah. that's, that's my world. Get rid of the rig. Just give me a shovel and a match, and I'll get to town. Um, but yeah, that definitely is a top. That's right there, second across from the first. Um, <laughs> the funny thing is, my favorite dish is a dish that never fully made it on on t- on TV, actually. So yeah, okay. that's actually my favorite dish. <laughs> so we need the director's cut of season one. We should. There should definitely be a director's cut. Let us come in and do like commentary and such like that. Uh, they will never give me the footage, but can, you know. if you do commentary, can you do commentary like Arnold Schwarzenegger does commentary for? Uh, God, what was the Mars how movie? Does, how, how does the Terminator do a uh, Oh, he just explains what's going on in the scene. Like, he just basically gives you a Cliff Notes version of what's happening in the scene. Rashid opened the lid. The meat looked scrumptious. He closed it and ran. Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly it. <laughs> but just do it in an Austrian <laughs> accent. That's just what's happening. Oh, man. No. Okay. All right. I can do that. I can do that. Maybe do that. Uh, maybe we should do that one day. Now that we've got the stream and the setup, we can do a side-by-side commentary well no what i was gonna say is would you watch the show and comment on it i haven't watched the show yet i would let my sisters watch it and tell me (laughs) speaking of the devil and they will appear this is just a day they're just all popping in here now well no you can do uh like you could like they have the podcast now or like it's always sunny they'll do an episode per like they'll do a a podcast episode per episode of the show breaking down the show maybe i should do that yeah oh We'll see. But yeah, that was a very convoluted way of saying that I can't really say what my favorite is. But my second favorite would be the lamb on the Asado Cross because I got, I got down with that cook, man. Ooh, I, I, t- I, I, I went in the bag for a couple of tricks on that cook, and I, I, I enjoyed it. Plus, it just looks awesome. Oh, it was, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. Sadly, I didn't get the cross. Max got the cross because I wanted the cross, but uh, it was still fun. It was still fun. Um, yeah, let's get into some of these... Uh, News bites rolling over to the previous topic of Barbecue Fest. Legitimately, Q Barbecue Fest is being held at TIA Bank Field in Jacksonville. They've got barbecue, bands, and beer, three Bs. And it's also being held November 19th and 20th. Tickets are available. We'll have the link in the show notes for you to go snag some. 
kind of crazy. You got to split the difference. If you're in that area, go. If you're in Charleston, come on over to Holy, Holy Smokes. Smokes. We're gonna we're gonna have some fun. Uh, like I said, I know where Rodney keeps the good the good liquor. Uh, I mean, it's tucked behind the passenger seat. If, if they <laughs> if they really wanted to bring in people, they would have a roast of Urban Meyer. At the <laughs> I would love that. Could we do that? Could we could we do the roast of like a roast of Pitmaster? Yeah, I'm gonna ask Pops. I'm like, Pops, we got to roast you. We're gonna do a roast of Kevin Blood. So that that will be after our brew and queue series. I'm no, I'm serious. I'm seriously we've been we've been knocking the doors. I got some people who would want us to come out to do uh, the Brewing Group Q Live. So okay. I even almost want to travel and not do it Georgia. Like, let's uh, get the gang together, and load up the ride, and hit the road. I mean, someone does want to go to Colorado. <laughs> yes, he does. He does. And uh, he was supposed to go with me, but it's, they, they ended up shutting stuff down because of who I'm filming with. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you know. When they've got, he's, got, he's got more squeeze and juice than I do. And I've got a fair amount, but can't beat him. There's a large-headed <laughs> black man at the at our door. He heard, he heard us talking. I, I told you I need. We need better security here. Uh, what's your next on your news? Do, do I do I do the do I do the festival that's sold out that you can't get into now? Yeah, let them know. It's like, hey, all right. So yeah, happen. every year uh, there is a oyster and barbecue festival indicator called mm. Landlocked. They're doing Landlocked Six. Sorry, I didn't let you know ahead of time, uh, but the tickets are sold out. But, like, this year on the barbecue side, they've got uh, A.V. Cottrell from Gene Smoke Meats. He does a lot of stuff with uh, Kimball House, uh, Jonathan and Justin Fox of Fox Brothers, mm-hmm. Fox Elliot Brothers. Moss, and then the Blood Brothers Elliot. guys are really in it. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Yeah, yeah like, I, I'm actually, um, like, I'd, I'd go for, for the Blood Brothers guys, honestly. But just, I, I just didn't know, like... You don't think your pitmaster card could get you in? Uh, definitely not. Really? I, I don't have the cred yet. Nah, bump that. I, I'm noise. flying under the radar Let's here. Bump that noise now. Nah, that card, your your card's good. Your card's good in my book. I'd use. I'd, I'd, I'd see. I'd swipe it. See if it gets accepted. No, no. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it. No, no, no. Go for it. I, I'm just telling you, man. I'm at the hell out of my. No, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> I actually, I, I'm, I, I, I actually just settle in. I'll have other people or stuff get in, get out. Especially at some barbecue joints and stuff like that, but no, I'll I say I say I'll save it for like really special occasions and such. Comes in handy. Um, yes, we do need security because we just have people just wandering in. In regards to the question of anything happening in Vegas, potentially spending uh, Christmas there, doing some more smoke and fire demos there. I had a good time in Vegas earlier this year. It was windy as all get out, which they don't tell you about Vegas. Uh, so much so that they had an advisory that it was getting so bad they actually had to sh- tie everything down, shut it up, and go inside. Because we're like, yeah, any of this goes off, it's, it's a wrap. So we had to kill all the fires, make everything we said, we, we had it going for a bit. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, never never knew that about Vegas. But the more you know. Uh, you want to roll into maybe one of these questions, then double back for some of our Q&As or, uh, or, uh, or news? I, yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's the best way to go. Like, get a couple questions in, do some news, get a couple questions in, do some, and then news. and then like remiss about how your sisters are mean to you. Oh my gosh, they're brutal. Did you see what they said to me about my shoes? No. Like, I'm afraid to buy anything anymore. I felt good. I thought I, I thought the shoes were nice. Did they, did they give you a, a look at those? Oh my gosh, they ripped me apart. And, it, and when I tell you they wasted no time, they wasted no time. Like, I posted it two seconds later. Notification, child, my son of a... Oh, and we're in, all in a group chat called Petty Sisters. And I knew. I just, I just knew. And, of course, they were going in, you know, oh, you're trying to compete with big tax. Look at the shoes. We'll buy the hat, blah, blah, blah. You guys are saying... It was just the just, just, a, just a regular day. Just another day in the neighborhood. Uh, Sorry, I brought it up. Yeah, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no... No, you're not. So let's get to these questions, shall we? You guys had some really good ones this this go around, uh, and two we're going to lump into one another because they're both pertaining to cooking chicken. Uh, one asks, and this is from Christ True Julio. I'm so sorry if I got that wrong. What's a couple tips for smoking chicken wings? Never tried it before, so anything helps. Now we're going to. Uh, piggyback on that and combine the two because there's another question 
in regards to wings and chicken and skin texture. And it asked, where is it, where is it, where is it? When smoking chicken, what do you do to keep the skin from becoming rubbery? There we go. So tips for cooking wings and a tip for not having rubbery chicken. You take the wings and I'll take the rubbery chicken. Oh, fine. You take the easy one. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> with wings, I, with all poultry, I'm a big believer in brining to begin with. You guys know that's my thing. Uh, definitely brine. If you're looking for information or looking for like a really basic brine, I've got it up on the website. I'll drop it in the show notes uh, for this recording so you can check it out there. But Rashid, is it a dry brine or a wet brine? Oh, oh now I, I see what you're doing. A little payback there. Gotcha. Uh, I do a wet brine. I start my wet brines all off the same with about a half gallon of water, put in my aromatics, my accoutrements, my salts. Then I cool it with a half gallon of ice, so it rapidly cools and I don't have to worry about it. Drop my poultry in, saran wrap, label, chuck it in the fridge, get it in when it fits in, and uh, I'll go from there. And believe it or not, it is about to be brining season to the heaviest degree when uh, November comes around. If you can find turkeys. If you can find a turkey. My yeah. boys at Goldie's took turkeys off the menu. A lot of cats have taken turkeys off the menu. It's, it's crazy. <clears throat> it's, it's gone bad. It's gone bad. All right, so for chicken, especially if you're doing a whole or half chicken, Mm -hmm. a spatchcock or half. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's going to, like, you, is it the backbone or, like, it's the the Spatchcock backbone out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you want to basically lay it flat as possible on the grill so that you're getting even heat over all the parts. And if you're, if you have a cooker that's going to, like, there's a, that you can point, a certain part of this chicken towards the fire, mm-hmm. point your thighs and legs towards the fire, your you wings and breasts away meat. from the fire. Um, so you said you like the wet brine yeah. for like a spatchcock that has a skin on dry brine and leave it out overnight in the fridge to kind of dry out that skin. Mm-hmm. And um, that also works for pork. Sorry, if you're trying to make I'm crackling, no one <laughs> you know, said anything about you. you oh, okay, well, Siri questioned Apparently. questioned me on my technique. She, she, so she's I, basically said, stop lying to the people you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> all right, well, today is my last episode. <laughs> it's been your last episode for a while. I'm just waiting for the right candidate. If you're looking to be a part of our podcast, please email us at thisweekinbarbecue at gmail.com. <laughs> all right, okay. So back to my technique that is totally not going to work at all. Uh, said so. <laughs> cook cook chicken hotter than you think. Don't yeah. don't try and cook chicken at two twenty five. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't work. You can you can slow roll it for you know thirty to forty five. Then you can crank it and finish it at a higher temperature. Uh, Anywhere so between two seventy five and three twenty five. Definitely, say. definitely. And then right before you crank indirect, it, yeah, and indirect. And right before you crank it, uh, I got this technique from Brian Keenan. He let me know. Shout out Take to some uh, canola oil or vegetable oil and brush the skin with it. Or beef tallow if you've got some. Or beef tallow. Uh, you know what? We're ch- talking chicken if you've got some schmaltz lying around. Yeah. yeah. You know? So whatever. Just any kind of like oil or fat that you can brush the chicken with. That's going to help crisp up the skin and you're not going to have like a rubbery texture. Exactly. Now the other thing about chicken is... It's got a window. You need to eat it within like an hour. Yeah, like don't let this head. This isn't something you can do to prep to take somewhere. No, this is okay. It's coming off the grill. It's going in front of people. Yeah. Time to go. It's not a turkey where you're going to let that bad boy ride for a little bit. No, no. Like that's, it's honestly why I don't do half chickens at pop-ups. Because by the time I would throw it in a Cambro, take it to an event. Mm-hmm. The chicken, it, like it's gonna steam, and the chicken and the skin's gonna get rubbery. Oh yeah, it's, that's why we do. What, you've seen the our pop-ups. We do our birds right on yeah, the scene. You, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. Yeah, fresh. we're there at like six. We just toss them on. Like let, let's uh, let that jerk chicken flow. But uh, I dig it. That was a that was a good one. That was a good good little back and forth. I like that one. A little uh, even though Siri two for one doubts me. Yeah, Siri Siri came out with the vengeance. Like hey hey, I don't know I don't know who you thought you were, but you're not it. Now this question. It's a good question, but I'm going to add the most controversial part of the question to the question. The question is, and this is from um, G and F Barbecue. Do you have a good brisket chili recipe? Which is the question? Now, I'll piggyback that by saying, do beans belong in chili? If you're in Texas, no. If you're not, it's up to you. I say do whatever you like, however you like, whenever you like. Right. I'll I'll go get a house in Dallas right now, throw a 
bucket of bush baked beans in that and just go to town. Like, what I, do you guys I, I have a more controversial opinion. All right. All right. A buddy of mine says tomatoes don't belong in chili because if you throw tomatoes in, you're just making a stew. Ooh. <laughs> mm. Are they? Well, I guess it depends on the. Um, hey, he's actually in here. JF <laughs> Barbecue, who asked the question, he's actually in here. Shut up, bro. Um, are they. Chunk tomatoes have they yeah, been, yeah, yeah. Have they been like, no no chunk tomatoes because if you do chunk tomatoes you're just making like a beef and vegetable stew. Wow, that's a trippy one. That's a trippy one. I mean, I do. So to answer the question, yes, I do have a brisket recipe. I actually made one uh, in conjunction with Dos Equis last year. I believe it's on the site. If you go check it out, it's a. Uh, I actually made it using their lager. It is very good. I've had numerous people recreate it and say they dig it. So yes, there is that recipe, and I'll link it. Here in the show notes below, beans and tomatoes. It's up to you. It's up to you. I mean, okay, for chili, the only thing I say is go the right way, get some dried chilies, toast yeah. them, rehydrate them, make your own chili paste. Well, that that then seeks us right into the next question uh, that got asked because that actually works on it. Um. Where did he go? I really do. Have the more questions keep coming in, so it keeps shifting the ones that I tagged. But this one came from Rob Abel. Any tips on smoking peppers into chilies? So I actually haven't done that. Really? You you have more experience with this. Yeah. Um, okay. So it depends on smoked versus fire roasted. If you're going to fire roast them off, make sure you peel off all that charred exterior. And I still recommend doing a light roast and everything to waken it up. If you're trying to smoke them, just not even, not direct heat or anything, uh, split the peppers open almost don't disconnect it, but split it open like your spatchcock and butterfly really, and remove the seeds. Here's why the seeds are extremely porous. They're very delicate, believe it or not. And that smoke can overpower them very, very quickly. It takes a lot more smoke to get the smoke flavor into the flesh of the pepper and the chili than it does to get into the seeds. The seeds can get it real quick. So I suggest de-seeding. If you dig the heat, don't toss them. Save them and just uh, bloom them rather quickly uh, using a skillet. Oh, she, what does bloom mean? I'll tell you. Just get a nice hot skillet. You're not cooking them. You're just letting the heat awaken the oils and the aromas. Take them off. Pat them down. Let them cool. Check them in your chilies to you get the flavor and the heat. And the, and the way you know that, or the way you know that they're ready, is as soon as that smell hits. Oh yeah, yeah. It's as soon as as soon as you can smell them, they're done. Take them off the heat. Yeah, don't don't let it run too much because it'll it's a thin line between ready and burnt. <laughs> a very thin line. <laughs> uh, yeah, like really really between re- ready or acrid, and that taste will just truly mess up your entire chili. And that's one of those that it doesn't matter how much heavy cream, tomato paste, or whatever goes in there, you can't get that out and if those of you are lost by that statement um heavy cream and tomato paste are great ways to remove the taste of something burnt in a stew or soup uh those of you guys who saw the show there was a moment where ash had burnt all of his stuff and that's when he wanted uh, to to leave and i was like no i got some techniques we can use and one of those was introducing heavy cream, introducing tomato paste and tomato sauce after we had skimmed uh, the top layer, never go down, never agitate anything. Skim slowly, don't go to the base, and we'd introduce some tomato paste to knock out any of that burnt char. Random facts about food that she knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't know we were getting a jingle today. Hey, hey, it's a whole day. Well, after you told me that freaking uh, Joker 2 is a musical, I'm like, well, that's not going on the watch list. Uh, hit us with your next bit of news, my good man. All right. So uh, if you've ever wanted to know about... Uh, Learning a pop up and what it takes to run a pop up. Yes, you guys right. hear that. Tune in. This is the pop up so, session. Uh, Joe Yem, he uh, he's currently a teacher in Chicago, but he does occasional pop ups. But he worked at you know Terry Black's, Truth mm-hmm. Barbecue, Leroy and Lewis. He's got a really good pedigree and in, in barbecue. He's he's put in the hours and put in the sweat. Is the, that, is the that sweat the word equity. That, is that what's supposed to describe us? We have a good pedigree. No, what, no. Oh, okay. so the, what, he, the sweat equity. Sweat okay. <laughs> Sweat equity. Uh, so he just posted a two-part series about planning and also, like, prepping and cooking for a pop-up. Okay. And he's a lot more thorough than me. I, I even messaged him. He's like, you, you, 
you have a system, I YOLO it. <laughs> like, yeah. like I kind of just run around with my hair on fire until it's time for service. Well, that's why it's bright red. Got yeah, it. yeah, Got exactly. It. No, no um, it, so I gave you the links. They'll be in there. It's yes. a two-part series. It's so totally worth watching. Uh, a lot of his other videos are worth watching. Like, he has a, a, a time-lapse of uh, a shift at Terry Black's and also a shift at uh, at Truth Barbecue and Brenham that are I would say are totally worth watching, too. This uh, episode of the podcast is not brought to you by this bird, but I do appreciate Brian for bringing it for us to enjoy. <laughs> um, no, I'm going to make sure that that ends up in the show notes. And his um, pop-up is called Knox Ave Barbecue. Knox Ave. All right, we'll drop yeah. that in there, too. Right on. So, so if you're in the Chicago that, area, look out for it. I think someone asked a question about that in regards to pop-ups or, or was in regards to Oklahoma Joe's or Riggs uh, for pop-ups. Thank you, sir. You are most welcome, my good man. But it's very good. There's so much that goes into a pop But the big thing I always tell people, just make a checklist. And if your event is on Saturday, do your pre-packing Thursday so that if you do need to get anything, you still have Friday to get it. And put, a, put the checklist on, on the top, checklist. On, yeah, put the checklist on the checklist and then have a copy of the checklist on your tubs so you know exactly what's in everything. Yeah, I've Especially got, when you have ha- extra hands coming to help you. You don't want someone opening every single tub to find something. Having it labeled what's on top makes it so much easier. I've got mine magnetized to the fridge where I'll grab stuff out of. Yeah. Well, you're just fancy with your magnets and what happened. No, someone else was fancy and did it for me. Oh, well, then even even better. Um, let's roll back into another question, then I'll come back with my piece of news. Uh, so we were talking about this a moment ago. <clears throat> Any recommendations for beef chuck? Trying to use instead of brisket for more price-friendly. You said... It's not more affordable. I said it is if you keep in mind the waste and the yield value of a brisket versus a chuck. <coughs> Sorry. Don't don't choke trying to prove yeah, me wrong. No, I, no, it's <laughs> if you buy a whole chuck roll, it is more affordable, but like when beef prices shot up, yeah. chuck roasts also shot up. So like even at yeah. Sam's, like it was five to six dollars a pound for chuck roasts. Mm. So by the time you do that, like it's honestly not that much more affordable than a brisket yeah. uh, there are there are things you could do with chuck roast oh, i don't want to get fancy again with the way i do it <laughs> no go for but, it people but i mean I, 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 a lot of people make what they call poor man's burn ends where they cube That's them true. up uh so you can get like cube them up cook them down cook them for a really long time until they're almost going to break down toss them in sauce toss them, mm-hmm. toss them an extra rub throw them back on the smoker yep that's a good way i think chuck roast actually makes really good pulled beef instead of chopped beef like when you cook it long enough, yeah, to, yeah, so like it where pulls well. it yeah, pulls it hits well. like two hundred, you can really pull apart and shred. So you can make like a pulled beef sandwich, mm-hmm. or it's also good for like tacos that way. I can get down with the tacos. What's your go to meat for tacos? Beef. Go to uh, like go to cut for for tacos if you're doing flat beef. iron, flat iron, or like or a skirt steak like that kind skirt of skirt, yeah, yeah yeah like just like that really thin. Cut that you'll like marinate. That's like one of the only ones I'll marinate. Honestly, I, I don't even do that. I'll just go to my Mexican grocery, get the stuff that's pre-marinated because they're gonna do it right in they're the first place. It, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's usually it's usually a cheaper cut. Like they probably don't even use flat iron because flat iron's super expensive now. Uh, brother, when I when I tell you, it's, it's the last batch of videos I've been putting out have been meals like fifteen bucks or less. Yeah, uh, multiple servings because it's high. Um, I, mean, I did a meal for us the other day with lamb and steak. Uh, uh, I did some rustic potatoes with a nice mushroom cream sauce, and I think I was all in for like twenty two, twenty five bucks. But it's, and I did a whole route. Yeah, I know. Lee's, Lee's looking at me like, Bro? shaggy, like yeah, protein. yeah. I got to hunt those deals. That that's what that's why that's why Kroger reached out. Um, what is it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was as solid. So that it was it's it's one of those man um, where you got to get creative right now and you've got I think uh, it's more this is the time to like learn techniques to make things stretch. I'm, I always harp back to it, but when I go from buying a bird for five bucks to it's twelve dollars, like, that's that's a lot. Yeah, what I, happened? Honestly, thankfully that's come down in price recently. Yeah. yeah. And now is a great time to stock up because I guarantee you, just a random bit of news for those of you who weren't aware, if that railroad strike had happened today, everything would have skyrocketed again. But it was uh, uh, avoided, temporarily avoided, because they've got like temporary terms 
in place. But if that oh. strike had happened, yeah, it would have gone was, right back. I was not was. aware we would have been screwed. Oh, so badly. So, so badly. Um, luckily, I've got three deep freezes worth of food to hold me through next year. I'm still trying to find a cow. I'm legitimately trying, trying to go. To find a cow. I'm I'm legitimately trying to go half on a cow with somebody. I really. Yeah, uh, uh, the two briskets you get will be great. <laughs> <laughs> but the filet mignon, the tomahawks. The oh yeah, cow. everything else. It's oh. just like yeah, if you're if you're only cooking brisket, like <laughs> investing in a cow yeah. is not really the, the best no, option. No, I'm, I'm cooking. I'm cooking. I'm cooking it all. I'm cooking it. Hey, all. let's bring back beef shoulder claw. Let's do hey. it. Hey, that's a good one. Uh, this is a good question, dude. What is your signature hot sauce? Hey, Lee, you want to check the mini fridge, see if we still got a bottle of my mango in there? So, I still have my bottle of your mango. Uh, there you go. So, I think... Um, That's what she said. <laughs> Sorry. I, like, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. You're better than that. Do you no, feel I'm good really about not. this? No, I'm really not. I just try to... They don't know you like I do yet, so I'm trying to make sure that... Like, yeah, they don't see the, the terrible side? Well, if they want to see it, just go back to our, my stories, hit the top live stream... And you can see all that bearded goodness. Hey, there is still a bottle left. So for those of you who are not aware, I did you at had, one point you gotta pass time, it over because I haven't had it. You haven't had it? No, you never gave me one. It's good. It's really good. I had it with my eggs like two days ago. Well, but let, can I at least show the people first? Yeah, sh- show the people Jeez, first. Yeah, so, sorry, sorry, so sorry. De- so demanding. <laughs> So for a guy who flips his ribs, I tell you, uh, <laughs> look, we're not we're not going to do this. I, I, I even thought, you know what? It's like if I wasn't prepping for a pop up, I was going to cook some GD ribs oh, okay. and flip them and bring them in, and then not tell you. I, I would just I would assume. Yeah, I'd, I'd assume just to buy because you'd hand them to me upside down. I'm like, see, see. So what 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 if what if I didn't flip my ribs and brought them in anyway? You would think I flipped my ribs. I would know because they'd, they'd be done right. They'd look the right way. Uh, so this, guys, is actually uh, my hot sauce. I had my own line of hot sauces. This is my mango scotch bonnet hot sauce. It sold like gangbusters. Legitimately, we moved through all the units in like less than a month. And I've been, it's maybe been a year or two since I have produced it again. You'll still get a couple scraggler bottles like this. This is one I keep at the offices. Lee's got one. Very few still have because I... You know, we made a lot, but it it just moved. I don't. I've been thinking about bringing it back. It's such a wonderful bottle, and uh, we we hooked it with the eyedropper because it is it is hot. It is hot. Uh, a little goes a very long way, and this is what spawned so many different cooks and flavor profiles. Like I wish I could have brought it onto the show because this would have set things off. Here, so go. so. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna get a preview of the next hot one sauce. <laughs> no, I, 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 we'd put it we'd put it up on there. Um, I think they like we they they respond back like we they sort of reached their cap for the for that season of of sauces. Um, but I definitely like that hot sauce. What do you think? Oh, okay. Well, I went for the teensy drop. That was that was a mistake. <laughs> the heat's good on what what I got. Like I almost have to do another one. Yeah, just just put your little nice uh, thimble go. full right there, a little, gonna little tasty look, taste. Look, can I get off camera to do this? No, no, I should turn it. Damn it. <laughs> okay, yeah, now I actually got the flavor and not just the heat. Yeah. What do you think? No, it builds. It rolls off the tongue like it's, it's but a, it's, it's, it's slow, hot, but it's not unpleasant. Yeah, it's a slow creeper. Yeah, uh, it's one of those where you can just keep adding it and not help hate yourself later. No, that's fantastic. Thank you. So, you guys let me know if you think uh, I should bring back the good old uh, mango scotch bonnet hot sauce. It'd be really good on some flipped ribs. <laughs> but it tastes better on ribs cooked the right way. Um, for though, Oh, we've got people saying, I want to see his face. If you would like to see the wonderful view that I have in front of me, you can check out my stories and tap the link that says watch live stream. We are streaming now on the old YouTubes. So, yeah, check that out, or you can watch the replay later. There's no excuse now. Now there isn't. Yeah, there's no excuse. Now there isn't. We Look, can hide no, lo- no, no more. No, you really can't. And eventually we're going to stop doing the streams on the old Instagram, and we're 100% on YouTube. So we did that. Uh, new summer question. What do you want? 
Uh, let's do one more news. One more news? Okay. Let me switch on over here and get us into some more news. Oh, it's got a good linger, too. And it, it might not be that I'm, I'm chasing it with bourbon that also burns. <laughs> so it's but just, it burns good. Yeah. It burns in such a good way. So, so it's just like burn on burn on, on burn. burns. Uh, one, I just wanted to say, uh, so a bit of news for those of you who aren't aware. Uh, Hurtado Barbecue is opening up their third location, so make sure to keep that in mind. Uh, R.I.P. Derek Allen's Barbecue. Yeah, yeah. Moment, moment of silence. Uh, that, that was their old shop. Yeah. Uh, next up, just revisiting. Then you guys know there's still time over at Paramount Pictures Studios. Friday, September 23rd. That's next week, Friday. 8 to 11 p.m. They're doing the smoked soiree. With a little, uh, little, little, little tilde over there. Did I not drop this on you? No, I, I didn't hear about that. Well, I mean, well, I can't. I, I have a pop-up to press for, so I'm not going to be there. Yeah, of course you're not. And, and it's also in California, so there's that. Yeah, I'm uh, also <laughs> not going to be there. Uh, so it is uh, a very, very big. They've got Maddie Matheson. They've got Pops, a.k.a. Mr. Kevin Bloodsoe out there. Um, they've got Danny Gordon. They're going to have uh, Floss Steak, 71 Above. We've got a lot of interesting uh, vendors, different different lists, different flavors. You know, Moose is killing it right now. I don't even I don't even think he's sleeping. To be perfectly honest, there, he's just he's just going to town, burning at both ends at the middle. Bert is going to be over there with Slab. Uh, it's going to be a full crew. STK is going to be there. I'll have all this and additional information in the show notes. But wanted to share that. Matty Matheson awesome is just setting up an escape room, but it's just the uh, it's just the ticket machine from the bear. Matty. <laughs> Maddie just dropped a jerk chicken video, and I was so perplexed. I was truly perplexed, but it was a good video, and I was like, he's not appropriate, he's just digging and trying to share right. the love of it. But I was like, okay, okay. Um, someone asked this question of you. It has to be you. Uh, have you ever used bacon grease as a binder for ribs? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like, I was trying to think, it's like, Get that now, pork I, I, and pork. I don't use a binder for ribs. Nothing. No, no grapeseed. No avocado. No. I mean, I take mustard. them right out of the package and pat them dry. And what rub sticks is what rub sticks. Like okay, yeah. Like, do you do the extra shake and extra on, an, on another coat, or you're just like whatever's there is there. I, I try and do a pretty thorough coat on the first time, and if I see I miss some spots, I'll try and hit Did those it, yeah. spots. Do do the shake and see what's like. If it looks like it's thin, then yeah. But so do you do for your ribs? So a lot of the joints, uh, and we're not at those volumes. But do you individual season or do you do the bucket season or like the hotel pan season where seasoning they just sort of do the sweep over and access? No, 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 no. I like, I, I do the bottle. The yeah, bottle, bottle shimmy. Yeah, yeah like yeah. Uh, ribs, brisket. Everything. Like, yeah, same, same. I, I mean, feel like I have the, more control, the, less waste. The guys I learned from do volume, and that's the way they, like. Go ahead and call them out. You, you're already speaking about them. All right, episode. no, no. Go, the, the Goldies guys who, like, I, I've staged at their restaurant a couple times, they they do the shaker. And here's the reason I say the shaker yeah. is if you throw it in a bin or you throw it, like, if you do the hotel pan, you're not controlling how much is going on. How much salt and how much right, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, I do my I do my rub and like when I put on ribs I'll do my mixed rub but on briskets mm-hmm. my rub is like a three part process yeah it's a salt base coat it's a twelve mesh paper twelve mesh paper coat and then it's my it's my rub that has salt pepper and some other stuff in it yeah my base of ribs always gets hit with a little smoked salt first and then let it let that bad boy ride overnight then I hit it with the rub uh, let it climatize. Chuck it on Phoebe Penny or one of the gals and let it roll from there. Yeah, that's 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 uh, my particular get down. And then you flip them about two hours in. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> do not, do not, do not flip your briskets. Two hours. I mean, no, I'm talking about ribs. No, definitely don't <laughs> like, do that either. Don't always f- flip your brisket. No, don't, don't, if, don't, if, don't flip your briskets. If I if, if I were to make don't don't pull a Brian, would you guys buy that shirt to help support our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you need instead of the, instead of um, I'm with stupid. It's, it's just this dude flips his ribs. This, and it's yeah, just, and it's just an arrow. This guy flips his ribs, and then you wear a shirt that says "I flip my ribs." Um, I don't need to wear a shirt. Everybody knows they should, and I promise you, I'm going to keep yelling from the mountaintops until I'm going to I'm going to bring you a rack of ribs, and you're going to be like, "I don't want I, your I, ribs. I'll, I want you know what I want? Freaking Manchego sausage. Get it out of the vault. You're being stingy." 
Oh, it's for stingy. no. I, I'm saving it for when we do a joint pop up because it's special. So you're blaming me now? No. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying it's special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can only I can only do it when I'm in the presence of greatness. Then what are you doing? It saving it for me for? Let's go find somebody great who knows what they're doing. Someone asked me earlier on this. They're like, um, hey, "Hold on, I'm just gonna do this." <laughs> Oh gosh! Uh, and, and like so, people who listening to audio won't know, but the people who watch watching, the video will know. know. They'll know. The ones who know will know. If you know, you know. Uh, Jay Fitch, eighty-eight, and def, uh, Jay. First off, always thank you for the support. You're always submitting questions, always tuning in, and commenting. Really means a lot. Asked if you would be, if asked, would you be a judge on season two of Barbecue Showdown? And my response was, they don't usually let the losers back to. To to onto the show, much less ask them to judge other people's food. Uh, and my response was, "Have you ever it's watched like, Top Chef?" And I said, "Different network, <laughs> different producers, different." Bra- Brothel network. knows where the money is. Yeah, it's not with me. Obviously, I'm I'm over here in the back corner of, next to a fake tree and halogen lights and some foam. My good about bad fires. idea. Your good bad idea. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, it's very true. No, um, uh, would I? Would I? Would I? Would I? Would I? Would I be a judge? I, just, I honestly don't know. I think I can't comprehend it because I know they're never going to ask. Uh, so it's like, why do that? That's like, hey, The Rock is going to call you for you guys to do, you know, a buddy comedy show together. It's never going to happen. Never going to happen. So I'm good. It's one of those, you know. I mean, he can't have someone who's almost as tall as him. I'm he def- needs I'm Kevin Hart. De- I'm definitely taller than The Rock. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely taller. Hey, let's for, uh, let's, I, let me make sure. For, how tall is The Rock for my for my audience? How tall is The Rock? This is great content. It is great content. <laughs> the Rock is 6'5". Got him by an inch. Son. That's all I need. I'll take that to my grave. That's all. I'm good. Well, that's Hollywood 6'5", so it's probably like 6'3". That's right. He is, he's Hollywood. He's That's Hollywood height. I'm actually 6'6 six, six in real life, not movie yeah. height. So, And then those boots. We'll, let's know for boots sure. probably raised a little bit. Let's know although, for sure. Although The Rock. How can... tall is Kevin Hart? Yeah, he ain't no 5'4". Uh, he's no five four. That's his Hollywood height. Kevin Hart's not five four. I shot Kevin Hart um, during his event tours years ago, and I damn near missed him. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like legitimately like I, I I like I I walked clear past the guy, had no clue. It's like whoa, you're very low to the ground. So yeah, that's definitely his Hollywood height. You, that was a that was a feedback from a lot of people. No. They're like, for those f- people who've met me and no, like seen me in real life, they're like, holy just crap. In ge- ge- yeah. general. Well, I mean, because I, I think with quarterbacks, because Russell Wilson yep. and Shout Drew out to Brees Russ. and some of the like Shout Ky- out to my Kyler Stone, Murray, man. there's been shorter quarterbacks lately. No, quarterbacks used to like, they're like 6'4 and up. Yeah. yeah. Um, that That's what a lot of people, for the people who've met me in person or got to see me from the show and sort of the size comparison to everyone else are like so th- so they're like you're you're a giant giant because they know how tall and big he is and they're like okay yeah yeah I think what I need to do is take a photo where I'm the small one so I gotta go call my buddy Daniel Daniel Kaley and be like he makes me uh, small you gotta go hit up LeBron I don't know LeBron like that but I do know Daniel and Daniel I think Daniel's six eleven or 7 feet Okay, yeah. Um, so he, he actually dwarfs you. Yeah, Daniel does make me feel small, um, like ever, uh, always. But yeah, um, but he's in, he's in LA. That's what I got to do. Because even when I you know when I, when I hang out with Terry, we take photos. We're like, oh, why are you bigger than Terry Crews? Like I don't know. The ground's not level. What do you want me to do? But that's how it was with a lot of people that I meet. People realize their actual size and perspective. Uh, I respect to me. Every time time I take a sip of this bourbon, it 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 reheats that that habanero. So that's what I have to do then. I have to sell the uh, hot sauce with bourbon. Right. Combo, two for one. Two for one deal. When when is your bourbon deal coming through? (laughs) That that we'll have to talk about off air. Okay, all right. We we can run that off air. Uh, Did you have... Just start a destroyer. Just start a destroyer, yeah. I, I know a guy. What do you have left on news? Did you hit everything? No, I mean, I, I've got one more. Okay. Um, Let's get it. Well, okay. I'll do two real quick because uh, Eater runs a great series called Smoke Point, and Arnest Robbins and Evie Mays were just on this week. 
Oops. Um, I think, uh, you know, they're kind of out in West Texas, Lubbock area, and what they're doing is really cool. And Arnis even builds his own smokers, and like he, so he's a he was a reverse flow guy, but the way he builds the smokers, are they he, four grand with a hole in the door? No, <laughs> no, no, the hole in the door is extra. <laughs> um, no, uh, so yeah, he uh, he kind of actually elevates his uh, his cooking grades a little bit, so he gets less. Um, okay, there's convective heat, and what's mm-hmm. the other one? I'm, I'm blanking right now. I'm having a I'm having a moment. I'm good. I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, 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 no, no. What is what is it called? It's for the listeners. Oh, uh, convection radiant heat. Radiant. radiant heat. So radiant heat is if you're you know heating it like reverse flow. It's got a plate. So a as the smoke plate. passes through, it heats up that plate, and that radiant heat from that plate will also cook the food. So he has he builds his smokers with kind of an elevated uh, grate, so he gets less radiant heat on the smoke or uh, on, on a reverse flow route. than okay. normal. He doesn't do double stacks, does no, he? No, okay. no. It's, it's like he has like he has one shelf through the unit, really. Uh, Ray Sean, yes, I prefer my own seasoning. Shameless plug: you can get American Prime by Fos Barbico at fosbarbico dot com. We've got a three pack and our trilogy. You don't Pork, like turtles? Poultry. <laughs> Is it petty of me to come out with an all purpose rub and call it Turtle Power? I don't think it's petty. Because no one knows. I, I don't. I, it's Except not, my sisters, they gave me a hard time. It's not, it's not petty. It's, yeah. it's more just funny. It's fun. Like, why not? For funsies. I got some scratch to burn. Go yeah, for well, it. Well, turtle power. Turtle power. That's what it'll be. That's going to be the, the graphic, the, the artwork I get to draw for um, the new line of all purpose rabbits. It's just going to be called Turtle Power. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, so the other news I do hey, at an event where tickets are going on sale today. Okay. So today is the 16th. Is it? September 16th. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. So Throwing Smoke Festival. The tickets Which are going on sale. Which is very hard to do. Right. They're going on sale today. It's a two-day event. So the first day, Cole Hearted Barbecue and Robert um, Robert Alvarado of Cole Hearted Barbecue, they're doing a, a field and fire cook. Okay. So, you know, open, open flame cooking for like a, a dinner experience. And then the next day... They'll have music and they'll have food from uh, Zavala's, Elliot Moss, Butters Barbecue, and 2M Smokehouse. Wow, 2M. So, yeah. I think I'm hanging out with the cats from 2M in Florida in December. I think that sounds right. I got to call Rick. Two, two Sorry, M- Rick. I've been, it's been crazy. I'll call you, bud. No, 2M is like one of the spots that like, on my first trip to Texas, that was like one of the spots that was like, holy shit. It was like it was like an eye opening experience. They're, they're doing it, doing it. Yeah. Right yeah. On. Okay. No. Uh, yeah, I've got to try that. Um, f- as far as tickets go, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't gotten the email email yet, so maybe I shouldn't talk about it. But because this podcast will be coming out in two days, I can talk about it now, and hopefully by then it'll be out. But the uh, the Roots Festival event that I'm a part of in Connecticut is uh, taking place. Uh, October 21st in Connecticut, a beautiful piece of property. The tickets should be on sale today. I haven't gotten the Lincoln Flyer stuff, it should, so they may be dropping it a little later. When they do, I'll drop that information in the show notes, but you guys can snag it. We're doing open fire cook. It's sort of a love letter to fall, local ingredients, rustic. I mean, we're, we're going to be out gathering the clams and oysters for the dish. I'm thinking about doing some uh, jerk oyster Rockefeller over uh, just a giant, what they call the fire beast, which is just a monstrous mound of stones with different channels uh, s- arranged in a way to let proper airflow and fire go. I've never seen um, Game of Thrones, but if there was like a barbecue apparatus for cooking, I feel like this would be in that show. Well, you say a love letter to fall, so the first thing I think of, pumpkin spice everything. Oh. Now taking applications for the now, coast. Now I'm, you just, like, right, I feel like every time we take a step forward, it's just two steps back with you. I, like, my goal is to get to three steps back. <laughs> we're, just, we're, just, we're just behind the starting line at this point. No, um, so that information is going to be coming there. I'm fine-tuning the menu. It's going to be really, really fun. I'm having a ball with it. I'm getting it. I'm really trying to do my best to incorporate as many uh, Caribbean flavors into these public demo cooks to make people aware. Um, the, the, it's not that the menu is limited, but we're using what's local to the area. So what they have, there are clams, oysters, sea bass, blue, um, bluefish, 
Uh, what else is there? We're get, we've got some some root vegetables going there as well. It's it's going to be very fun. Like I don't get to play with fire like that in front of people like in that that massive of a crowd very often. So having my own playground, I'm going to have a ball. Uh, so doing like I said, oyst- jerk oysters, Rockefeller, always fun. I'm making a fresh batch of jerk sauce to get up there. Doing uh, some nice sea bass, keeping those up. Doing a nice roasted um, squash salad with some greens. I'm just, I'm just tossing everything in the fire. Ash cooking at different levels. We're gonna, we're gonna have some fun. You guys can follow along with it as well. What do you say? If Fuzzies. I could be there, I would be there. I know, I know. You're just too busy for us. Uh, no, I mean, I think it, the pop-up game is when you have to schedule things like six months in advance to make sure you have a date. No, no, I get it. I'm not. I'm not. Not really mad at you. I'm not. Uh, I do want to think. Let's knock out two more and, and call it. There's one from Tan Tanginator Tangi. I'm, we've got to got to find names in here. Uh, so, what's a good way to make pulled pork on a Weber? I've had many disasters. What do you think's going on there? Uh, would the snake method work for pulled pork? Snake could work. Uh, I would do snake with a na- with a with a water pan. Yeah, I mean you could also do the the indirect the year. Yeah, two zone. Two zone. Yeah, and then just I would what I would do is I would if you plan on having like a ten hour cook, do a quarter rotation every two point five hours. That's a good one. Yeah, or I would do a quarter rotation every two hours and then wrap for the last two to four. Yeah. That's a good one. That, yeah. that, that'd be a good one. If you're going to do the two, two zone, yeah. Get it going both sides. And, and honestly, okay, burn out. this is going to... Cooking on a Weber, and if you're concerned about it, like that may be one of the only times if you can get a pork butt with a good fat cap, start the cook fat side down to kind of protect the meat. And then when you get <sighs> towards the end of the cook, rotate it up to fat side up. I could definitely see fat side down on a snake method on a Weber. Yeah, because that fat pooling because the snake is on the perimeter it wouldn't hit the coals or anything, so you'd have to worry about anything igniting or. Yeah, catching. but you're but you're still heating up the bottom of the pan, so you're gonna get some steam from like you're gonna get some of the, like that fat rendering yeah, up into yeah. the meat. If your Weber, if you can double stack on your Weber, if you can get your butt and a pan under, what you can do is just shallow fill your pan, let those that fat oil collect, pour that off into a saucepan, let it reduce, and you've just got some great. You know, uh, pork fat to use for whatever you want to use it for. And and the one thing about a rubber, it's a smaller cooker. So everybody says, and this is bad advice sometimes, is like cook at 275 or whatever. On a Weber, it's a smaller cooker, so heat is more intense. It is. There's not a lot of travel. So right. you, gotta, you so, don't need as much fuel. Uh, yeah, I would, I would not go above 250. So my question to you then, and this let's we, let's send it off on this note. Thank you for the question. Um, let's end it on this note. What has been the worst barbecue advice you've ever gotten? <laughs> Flip and rip. I have to say, no, that's the best advice I got. It. Shout out to Clay Cowgill of Snow's Barbecue. They're doing something right. I feel like there was just a lot of there's a lot of hostility and animosity right there. I don't, I don't um, know where that came from. No, the worst. I mean, like, don't say I, do this show because that's that hurt. <laughs> that's the worst advice you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, listen. no, I mean, like, th- I think like barbecues come a long way, and there's so much yeah. more information about it now. I mean, the whole idea of bad advice back in the day was like wrapping before the stall so you could push through the stall. And that's very like, that's not how it works. It's very the opposite of how you should do it. Mm -hmm. Like, so I can't remember the last time I've gotten like actual, Oh, okay. All right. So my boy Goldie's okay. Lane Lane Milne. uh, So they now cook their sausage hot. They do a hot smoke day of okay. that way they like because they only have so much pit space timing and stuff and how much they cook still make a great sausage but he was telling me and this makes sense when you're doing a hot smoke and does not make sense when you're doing a cold smoke he mm-hmm. says spray your sausages with water and i was like uh, 
the reason they do it is they're trying to cool down the casing so they don't render as much fat okay. during the, the hot smoke. Again, when you're cooking over 200, makes perfect makes sense. Makes perfect sense. If but when I'm cold, trying to, no. yeah, when I'm trying to get color on on links and I'm cooking at 140, uh, don't do like that. moisture and liquid is the absolute antithesis of what you want. Coming out with a dictionary word of the day where <laughs> I see you. So, uh, like, it's not bad advice. It's just bad advice for how I do sausage. How you prep, yeah. Yeah. So, like, I, I tried it. It didn't work. It actually made the casings. Like, his uh, like his theory and when hot smoking is it, it makes the casings, uh, like, have a, like a better snap. But it makes the casings more rubbery in the way I cook. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, so it's more of advice that doesn't work for mine. But that's yeah, the, that's the most recent your, advice that I've gotten. Your, that for didn't your work. process, yeah. yeah, it's not feasible. No, um, hmm. I should have had an answer before I asked the question. <laughs> what has been the worst piece of barbecue advice I've ever gotten? Ooh, bullet two oh three. Oh gosh, don't, 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 don't. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, if, if you want a reason, uh, sorry, I'm I'm, a recept- I'm giving you. No. I'm really just giving you time to think. Please, I, yeah. I need it. Uh, so the idea of, and this goes, this will also. T- like this also goes for the three, two, one rib method. Mm. Like you can't break down barbecue into an exact temperature or an exact method because nope. every cook is different. Mm-hmm. So the fact that it was like pull it two or three or pull it two or five, I've had points in briskets that aren't done till two Oh seven or two ten. Yeah. I've had, I've had flats and briskets that are done at one ninety five. Uh, it just, it's more of a feel thing. Use the temperature as a guide to check how the brisket feels more than a guide of when to pull. Mm. Yeah. Did, did oh, that yeah. give you enough time to figure no, out? No, 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 no. Uh, I guess one of the, one of the, it's not necessarily uh, the worst piece. It was, I'd gotten advice once like, no one wants Caribbean food for barbecue. That's bullshit. Yeah. You know, when I started, because I was with the menu, was like back in the day when I first started, that's what I had. I had a bit of everything. Uh, and also tell like more options the better type of thing, which is not great. You can narrow that bad boy down and go to town with it. But when I first started, I was serving pulled pork, chicken, pulled chicken, turkey, ribs, brisket, tacos, nachos, burrito, everything. Like, whoa. Like, being told that more is better. And then I realized, like, no, I'm literally serving the entire kitchen sink. Pull it back, and so a com- culmination of having more variety, and no one's gonna want you know stick to just certain flavors. Where it's definitely like the worst advice I've ever gotten. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't, I can't recommend that advice to anyone. More is not better. Chick Fil A makes billions of dollars, and they sell one protein, and, and, they, and they're not even open on a day, and they're, and they're not even open on a day. So that that was definitely the worst advice I'd gotten. I, I think the most interesting stuff that's happening in a barbecue is people taking their experience and like flavoring their barbecue with their experience. Yeah, sure. Like I like I don't like the that's a weird way to phrase it, but like I feel like saying ethnicity doesn't do it justice. No, you get koi koi when you talk about that koi bar the guys at koi uh yeah. they they come to mind. Yeah, they because mind heavy. he's a Taiwanese American yeah. cooking Viet Cajun barbecue. Yeah, like that's but, a long but, but Viet Cajun cuisine is ingrained in Houston, so that's his experience. Like, I, like Eater did an article recently, and they called it chaos cooking, hmm. and it it's more about cooking your own experience and not labeling it as an ethnicity or anything like that. Yeah, you're you're cooking when you use Caribbean flavors. You're cooking your voice in what's true to you. Mm-hmm. And uh, B, uh, Brian Furman says uh, he doesn't have a style. He doesn't do Carolina, doesn't do Georgia. He just cooks like Brian. This is what I like to eat. This is my style. That's what it is. So when people ask me, it's mine. It's not Georgia. It's not Jamaican. It's not this. It's not a, there's hodgepodge, there's pieces, there's influences. But this is how I get down. And if you dig it, pull up a chair and let's eat. If not, go have Rice Krispie Treats with my sister. 
I'd rather have his hash and rice. <laughs> no, definitely. I love his, uh, his, his grill cakes. But, um, yeah, where can the fine people find you? Because those who are listening, maybe they can attend for tomorrow if you want to tell them what's happening. Or at least for next week, so I can put that out there. Uh, yeah, okay. So tomorrow, if you're watching live or listening, mm-hmm. uh, I am teaming up with Keebler's Kitchen and Keenan's Pit Barbecue. Right on. So we're doing kind of like a hog, fe- like a, a pig hog fest. At Pontoon Brewing. You don't from want to say the to name, do you? No, no, because that's what you I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. back what we were going to call it in the first right. place. Take back your power. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> Brian Keenan's of Keenan's Pit Barbecue is cooking a whole hog. Uh, Richard Washington of Keebler's Kitchen, he's yep, yep. cooking ribs. Uh, his wife, Dana, is going to be making some kick ass cupcakes and yeah, banana right. pudding, like some of the best baked goods yeah. in, in Georgia. Hands out. Um, I'm doing five different sausages because I'm insane. What are the uh, what are the flavor profiles? I so, swear, if you say manchego, I'm throwing this. <laughs> I'm not doing manchego. Okay, I'm not doing manchego. Uh, I'm doing my personal favorite, just the straight my te- straight Texas hot gut. Your hot, yeah, no, you dig the hot yeah, gut. yeah. That, like I think that's just like it's simple. It's got a nice kick. I've got some flavor. reapers that I got to bring you next. <laughs> we could we could do a hot hot gut. That's that. That'll um, burn you I'm down. doing a chili cheese, so with American cheese okay. in there. Uh, I'm doing a Gruyere and uh, and caramelized onion with some caraway seeds, so it almost eats like a, a patty melt. Okay. Uh, then uh, hot honey Havarti. Okay. And a uh, linguisi or linguisa calabrese, so like a Portuguese, kind of a spicy Portuguese sausage. Right on. Right yeah. On. Um, oh, I dig it. I dig And it. then... September 24th? That's next Saturday, right? Is it 24th or 27th? I think it's 23rd. 24th. Is it 23rd? I think it's 23rd. Okay, hold on. This is, this is great. Again, great content for the audio while we... No, yeah, it's 20... Next Saturday is the 24th. Okay, Friday so 23rd. 23rd. Uh, or the... No, it's the 24th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is the 24th. Uh, we'll be at Round Trip Brewing for their kickoff of Oktoberfest. Oh, that's right. So, uh, shout out to Tom, who's... Helps me with pop-ups. He's making a, uh, a house mustard with their Mars in Oktoberfest. Nice. Uh, I'll be doing some uh, fresh brats. And then we'll have, our, like, the full barbecue menu. So brisket, ribs, no turkey because no one can get it. Yeah. Um, Got to wait uh, till November. Some, some sausages and some other stuff. Cool. But that's, that's it. What, I mean, what do you got going on? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I will be in Denver. You'll be in Denver. Uh, it starts. That's why I'm. I went from like a, a low three to like a, a high four and a half. Got the hair done. Okay. Um, I have a lot of camera time uh, from now till the end of the year. So that's going to be my, my get down for a while. The cooking that I'll be doing isn't going to be public until October, but I'm hoping on changing. So that's, that. the, that's the Connecticut. That's Connecticut. Okay. And that's ticketed. I think we're going to, they're capping it at about 600. I'm going to drop the information when that is out. It's the Roots uh, Farm Fest with Brad Leone, myself, and a couple other really cool, talented cats. Uh, shout out to Gosney. They're going to be um, – they're, they're sponsoring. They're dropping off all types of uh, pizza rigs and stuff to cook on. But you know me. I'm going to be over in the corner with my shovel and two sticks, making it do what it do. But aside from that, no full public stuff for a while. We'll work on something. I'm working on something. I'm trying to make something happen. Here. You know, we might end up doing something over at the new design center at Halcyon. But I don't know where I can park my rig. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's that, that's what I've got going. And I'm hoping to make something happen. If I'm lucky, maybe Pops will let me come over and start a fire back over at Corsicana and just finish the, the year off right that way. But, yeah, that's what we got going right now. Hell yeah, dude. Right on. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. As always, I am your host, Rashid Phillips. Joining me is... Brian Hull. Finally, some excitement. And this has been This Week in Barbecue, which is the barbecue-focused podcast that brings you both the good, the bad, and everything in between in the world of barbecue. If you enjoyed listening, please tell a friend to tell two friends. And as always, be good to one another. Take care.